The NBA is full of players of all shapes and sizes, but let's be honest, most of these men are physical beasts that most people would do best not to mess with, especially in a confrontation out in public. And today, players are on fitness and nutrition regimens for maximum strength to weight ratio. NBA players are used to the physicality of the sport, but sometimes an altercation can bring out the same physicality in their private lives. For us average people, it's best not to get involved, but some emboldened people take the risk of provoking the wrath of an NBA millionaire. By the way, don't forget that once we reach 50,000 subs, we're giving away a PS5 or Xbox One with a copy of NBA 2K22. All you have to do to be entered to win is like, comment, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Now let's take a look at times that NBA players fought someone off the court. Jaleel Okafor Jaleel Okafor has been a source of several NBA memes during his six-year career. After a promising rookie season averaging 17.5 points per game, although playing on one of the worst lineups in NBA history that year, it's been all downhill for Jaleel. Although being the third overall pick in the 2015 NBA draft, Okafor hasn't been able to meet the expectations and has quickly become labeled a bust. Perhaps some of this perceived failure and pressure pushed Jaleel into several of the nightclub altercations he has become known for. On November 25, 2015, Okafor ended up fighting not one, but two people in separate incidents in Boston. In one instance, Okafor just laid out a man only half his size and then fled the scene. Dennis Rodman Sometimes a fight can be over as soon as it started, but in the eyes of the law, that makes no difference. Former NBA bad boy Dennis Rodman was in the headlines during his playing career. He gained notoriety for his physical play, defense, and tenacious rebounding skills. But he also spent a lot of time in the press for the wrong reasons. Skipping practices or even games, altercations with authority figures, suspensions for technical fouls, and even kicking a cameraman but never for off-court fighting. That is until celebrating his 58th birthday at the Buddha Sky Bar at Delray Beach, Florida. While there, the worm allegedly slapped a fellow patron twice. Rodman was then charged with battery. According to the victim, it was out of nowhere. He just hit me and I was blindsided. Rodman's comments regarding the incident were, whatever happened happened, but it didn't happen. Sounds like a typical response from the worm, right? Steven Jackson this man needs no introduction when it comes to fighting in the NBA, especially when it comes to jumping into the stands to beat down on fans. Besides co-starring alongside Ron Artest in the infamous Malice in the Palace incident, Jackson has had several incidents off the court. In 2006, Steven and some teammates got into a fight outside an Indianapolis strip club. Jackson was punched and even hit by a car rolling onto the hood. But on one occasion after that, caught on live video, Jackson and former NBA star Steve Francis got into an altercation in a nightclub. Both of them were pursuing a rap career, so maybe they decided to throw down the club for inspiration. Anyway, the incident ended with Jackson attempting to choke out Francis with a vice grip around his neck. J.R. Smith The right to peacefully protest is protected by the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. But if chaos ensues, anarchy can arise. J.R. Smith wasn't about to let any anarchy go unpunished. During looting in LA, Smith said, One of these white boys didn't know where he was going and broke my window in my truck. Smith was caught on video repeatedly kicking the guy on the ground. Then when the guy got up, J.R. delivered a huge hit straight to the guy's jaw. Eventually, the man was able to run away under his own power. Malik Beasley Sometimes NBA players want to fight another pro player, but some take it a step further and want to fight a pro who plays a completely different sport. In August of 2019, former Denver Nuggets guard and Denver Broncos safety got into a tussle. The only reason this fight broke in the news was that the entire thing was caught on video in an upscale Denver apartment complex lobby. Beasley was recorded pacing in the lobby with no shirt on but still wearing his Nugget shorts when NFL safety Sua Cravens entered the lobby. A heated battle broke out as things quickly escalated to blows before others could separate the two. Soon afterwards, Cravens jumped on Snapchat to claim victory. The whole ordeal was in regards to a female Instagram model, Montana Yao. And although Cravens claimed he'd won the fight, Montana actually ended up marrying Beasley. Tony Allen This fight was between two teammates. While never a superstar player, Tony Allen has been considered a star role player. During his time with the Celtics and the Memphis Grizzlies, he was known for his lockdown wing defense. Allen's reputation for being tough-nosed and hard-nailed earned him the respect of NBA players and fans alike. 
and with that respect comes the fear of pissing off a man of Allen's considerable stature. But this might not have concerned his teammate O.J. Mayo. After a card game on a team charter flight, the young Mayo owed Allen more than $1,000, but he refused to pay up. Bad decision. Tony promptly gave O.J. a knuckle sandwich. Mayo missed the next game with supposed bronchitis, but it's pretty obvious that first off, he likely had a swollen face. Charles Barkley While some might say he was a bit undersized, Charles Barkley was known for being built like a truck. The now TNT commentator has become an NBA treasure for his overconfident and hot takes and for clearly speaking his mind. Back in 1991, Chuck was drinking with a buddy in a local bar. At some point during the evening, a group of men started taunting the NBA star. Charles and the woman he was with decided it was time to go around 2.30 a.m., but relentlessly, the three men, described by Chuck as weightlifters, proceeded to follow Barkley. Outnumbered three to one, Charles decided to take the crazy up a notch. In the cold winter, he took off his coat and shirt. Standing bare-chested, Chuck said, wipe on, wipe off. Then he launched a rocket fist at one man, and the man was out cold with a broken nose. Chuck was charged with battery, but successfully argued the charges. Despite being one of the most intimidating players of the 90s, Charles still has had several run-ins with regular people of the public. On another occasion in 1997, the Houston Rockets were in town for an exhibition game, and Charles spent the prior evening and the early morning at a local bar. A fellow patron threw a glass of ice at Charles and three women he was seated with. Chuck retaliated with brutal force. Despite the interventions of an off-duty police officer, Chuck managed to pick up and toss the patron through a plate glass window. Staring at the man lying in a pool of blood, Charles simply said, You got what you deserved. You don't respect me. I hope you're hurt. Matt Barnes Relationships are complicated, and being rich and famous doesn't make one immune to those complications. These days, NBA players are used to having the details of their relationships published in gossip magazines and news columns. But for Matt Barnes and Gloria Govan, it was more than that. Glory was featured on the TV show Basketball Wives, and Matt wasn't exactly stoked to have his personal life on display, and blames the show for contributing to the failure of their marriage. While on a custody visit to Govan's place to see his kids, all was well until Matt heard a phone conversation he wasn't meant to hear. Gloria had exited her car, but the speaker was still connected, so Barnes overheard his ex-wife Gloria and someone on the other line having a romantic talk, which was his former Lakers teammate, Derek Fisher. What was worse is that Derek Fisher had been spending time with Barnes' boys and living in the house that Matt was still paying for. So Matt put Fisher on notice for a major butt-kicking coming his way. Not even being dissuaded by his marriage or an inevitable Matt Barnes beatdown, Derek Fisher was soon spotted at Gloria's home in LA. Taking matters into his own hands, Barnes drove 95 miles to beat the crap out of Derek Fisher. Hopping the fence of his own house, Matt crashed Govan's private house party. He tackled Derek Fisher straight into a sliding door before personal security broke up the fight. Barnes was suspended for two games with the Grizzlies, and soon thereafter, Derek Fisher lost his assistant coaching job. Paul Pierce Sometimes NBA players might get into trouble that they weren't ready for. During the summer before his third season, Paul Pierce found more trouble than he probably could have imagined. It began as a night out with some friends at a club in Boston. The problems began when Pierce started talking with some women. Pierce remembers a man telling him to stop talking to a young woman, and then a fight broke out in a blur of adrenaline. Pierce wasn't even aware of what happened to him until he realized blood was pouring down his face. Paul had been stabbed three times in the stomach, five times in the back, and hit on the head with a bottle. Teammate Tony Batty rushed Pierce to the hospital, where he received a life-saving lung surgery. Paul Pierce was not only survived the incident, but then played in the NBA for another 13 seasons. Now, are there any other insane fights that you think should be on this list? Let us know in the comments and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest pro sports content updates. See you next time.